All right, this is just a little tutorial explaining my drum editing workflow in Reaper using a dynamic split, uh, an SWS quantize action, and a fill gaps code that I coded myself. Uh, so first, uh, let's just listen to the drum tracks that we're dealing with. You get the idea. They're all right, but uh, they're not super, super tight. So uh, the first step is to create a stereo stem of the drum tracks to use as a reference for dynamic split. So I've already done this, and what I did is I added an instance of trigger to each uh, track that I wanted to use as a reference. In this case, the kick track, snare track, and the two tom tracks. And it's just outputting a tiny little blip sample. You can hear that. That's the, all it's outputting. So it's just a tiny transient, none of the natural sound in there whatsoever. So what I do is I solo the kick, snare, tom tracks, uh, right click my drum folder and render it to a stereo stem. And uh, what you're left with is just this track here, which is just complete blips at all the exact transient points with no bleed. So yeah, that's what it sounds like. You could use Reaper's uh, dynamic split against the actual transients, and you'll probably have success if you know there's enough isolation between the drum kit pieces. But uh, I have Trigger, and this just works better for me because the transient detection is quite good in that plugin. So this is what I do just to speed up the process, and it leaves less room for me to have to go in and manually you know adjust stuff. What I'll do now is I'll just select that track and uh, dynamic split. I know that all those transients are drum transients because I set the settings and trigger accurately. And I know that there's 105 uh, because I've used this a few times now. So all I'll have to do is split now. Make sure you have leading pad, trailing pad, all that stuff set to zero milliseconds. And uh, split grouped items needs to be turned on because you have to have this stem grouped with the individual tracks. So I'll just split all these items now. If you go and check it out, you'll see that it split every single drum track at every transient for every item. So we can go in. This is just like a wasted space because it cut at the transient here. Uh, we don't need that. So we'll uh, just start going through and quantizing now. So I have a uh, Quantize item starts to grid preserving length mapped to shift Q. Most of this stuff is like eighth notes at the smallest. So we'll set the grid to eighths. And we'll just start going through selecting and quantizing stuff. So just select a chunk. The other thing you can do too is uh, you know, make sure you have auto crossfades and trim behind while editing turned off so that stuff can freely overlap and you can just drag stuff around um, and get it so that the start of each item looks like it's close to where it needs to be before you quantize and then you know there's going to be less you know weird stuff going on when you're trying to quantize but uh, for the most part this stuff looks like it's just going to go just fine on its own so you know just keep going through it's easy to tell if something went to the wrong spot because you'll have a huge gap but uh, most of these gaps seem to be pretty reasonable in size. It doesn't look like stuff's moving too, too much. And you can just work your way through. Like, clearly I could have done this in much bigger sections because I haven't had to adjust anything. Like, let's see what happens. If I undo that stuff and just go back to the first. Now I could probably select this. I know there's some 16th notes later, so we'll leave those out. I bet yeah, this will just work. Yeah, so that quantized every single hit and that, all that section all to the right spot, no problem. So here's some 16th, so I'll set the grid to 16th. I have a keyboard shortcut for that. I also have a grid toolbar. It's sort of helpful for just jumping through stuff. 
But uh, select this stuff now. Just quantize those sixteenths. Some eighth note stuff again, but uh, it looks like it's close enough to the right eighth note that I can still leave it on sixteenths. These two sixteenths. And then the last couple hits. So we can just take um, good to eighths. Quantize that stuff. And uh, if you want to listen now, what sounds like quantized, uh, you'll hear a bunch of gaps and stuff because all the gaps are there. We haven't smoothed it yet, but this is what it sounds like now. So it sounds sort of choppy and crappy, but once you get used to drum editing like this, you start to learn to ignore uh, the choppiness and just listen for the tightness to make sure everything's in the right place. But to clean it all up now, all we have to do is select all these items and uh, run my action. If you just search Adam Wathen in the, the actions list, you'll find it. Uh, fill gaps between selected items advanced. I also have it on a toolbar labeled as smooth. I'll just open it from the toolbar here. And I'll uh, run through what all these settings do. So, say we have this section here. Um, a trigger pad is it's like a safety buffer that's placed before each transient, just in case it chopped a little too late, or in case there was, you know, s another transient right before it that was quieter that you wanted to preserve. Like, say someone hits a snare and a ride at the exact same time, but they flam it a little bit, and the snare's a little bit after the ride. If it cuts at the snare transient, then the ride transient is going to be right here, and when you fill the gap, you're going to get a ride transient here and a ride transient here. So what the uh, trigger pad safety buffer does is uh, it'll basically extend the start of everything by that amount and trim the end of everything by that amount as well. So it would keep that little ride transient here and delete it from over there so that you don't have any repeated stuff happening. Crossfade length is just how long of a crossfade it creates when it overlaps the items to fill the gaps. It's pretty self-explanatory. Uh, maximum gap serves a couple purposes. It's basically just uh, the maximum gap allowable before it'll start to time stretch this item to close the gap if time stretching is enabled. So this gap here is probably not too big. It's only uh, uh, it's 22 milliseconds, so it actually is bigger than the maximum gap. So the maximum gap is 15 milliseconds, which is uh, about there. So what the code will do is it'll time stretch this item until it reaches the maximum gap. And then it'll fill that gap the beat detective way just by trimming this back. Because if you have to fill a big gap by trimming this back, you're going to reveal too much of this audio and it's going to sound glitchy. So time stretching is a good way to avoid that in situations like this. The maximum stretch value, it really just corresponds to a, an item's play rate when stretching. So if you look, uh, I have it set to 0.5. Um, notice this rate value here, it, that's the same value. So if I had it set to you know 0.95, this item would never stretch more than that much. And then it would have to fill that gap by backfilling, even if the gap is still bigger than the maximum gap. But because I have it set to 0.5, and the maximum gap was 15 milliseconds, which is there, um, this item would stretch until it reached that boundary or until it got to a 0.5 play read at which it would stop because that's just too much stretching. So if we had this set a maximum play rate to you know 0.98, then it would only stretch to here and then it would have to close the gap another way. Preserve transient is a pretty neat feature. What it does is uh, a lot of the time if you're stretching, you know, of material. Stretching out the transient doesn't sound that great. In Reaper it usually sounds okay because the uh, the algorithm for stretching seems to consider transients on its own anyways. So it stretches transients that it identifies differently than it would stretch you know something that just sounds like sustained material. So a lot of the time you can get away with not using this feature um, mm -hmm. but it is handy to have for sure. So what it does is uh, in this case it's set to 35 milliseconds so when it goes to stretch this item, it'll first make a selection here, that's 35 milliseconds, and it won't stretch this stuff at all. What it'll do is it'll place a cut 
here and crossfade these two items and it'll only stretch this item. So it'll only stretch the sustain of the snare hit, for example, and leave the initial transient untouched so that you're not stretching out the actual attack. Transient crossfade length is, you know, it's the same thing as crossfade length. It's just the, the crossfade length that's used when splitting uh, after the transient. In some cases, you might find that uh, it sounds better to use a slightly longer transient crossfade length than uh, regular crossfade length because sometimes you might get artifacts when Reaper is jumping from an item at a regular play rate and crossfading it with an item that has been stretched. So you just sort of have to experiment a little bit. Uh, fade shape. This corresponds to the fade shapes that are listed here. So one is a linear crossfade. Two is like an equal power crossfade. Three is like the opposite of an equal power crossfade. Four would be like this extreme slope. You know, five would be the slope where it, it sort of slopes down really fast. And uh, six would be like an S curve. Actually, I had that wrong. It starts at zero. So it's zero, one, two, three, four, five. But uh, for drum editing, usually you're going to want to use linear crossfades or equal power crossfades. So this option is only really there to allow you to choose between those two options. So zero or one are all you're really ever going to want to use. And then mark possible artifacts is a new feature I implemented where it will put a marker anywhere where the gap was bigger than the maximum gap and um, the maximum stretch value was reached. So in this case, even though this is bigger than the maximum gap, it's the gap isn't bigger than the maximum gap after it's been stretched, right? Now the maximum gap is, or this gap is only 15 milliseconds, which is the same as the maximum gap, so it's likely not to be a glitch. But uh, imagine, you know, we had a gap this big, and we had the maximum play rate set to, you know, 0.85. It would stretch to here, and then it would stop, and now you still have a gap that's 35 milliseconds that it has to fill like this. So the code is smart enough to see that, and it's going to put a marker here and say, listen, um, I couldn't stretch it enough. The gap is still pretty big. I did my best to fill it, but you might want to listen and make sure that it sounds okay. Uh, and if it doesn't, you might want to you know, try stretching it more, or copy and pasting in a different hit, blah, blah, blah. But it, uh, it's really handy. Instead of having to listen through the entire track, and, you know, paying attention at every single spot for artifacts, you have markers set out for you where you know you should still listen to the whole song and make sure it sounds good of course but at least with the markers you sort of know what parts to pay particular attention to because it's hard to listen to you know a four minute song start to finish trying to listen to every single transient and making sure everything sounds all right so anything it doesn't mark is you know 99 percent likely to sound fine and anything it does mark it's sort of like a 50 50 chance that it'll sound great or that it might sound a little off but usually it's usable anyways, but at least you have some sort of reference. So we'll just select everything and run this script. Uh, these default settings are usually pretty good. So we'll just do that. So you can see it filled all the gaps. Here it cut at the transient, only time stretched the tail until it got to the maximum gap, etc. You know, we've got a handful of possible artifacts. We can listen through to see how this sounds now. So there you go, it's like perfectly quantized, great sounding drum tracks, uh, you know, with very little effort. I'm pretty uh, I'm happy with how this turned out, and hopefully you guys uh, find some use for this sort of thing in uh, your own workflows.